And uh, Proverbs, the book itself, is God's handbook on how to wise up and live. And that sounds glib, but it really is. It's, it's, that's exactly what it's all about. Now, there are three losers that surface throughout the book. Three class of losers. People who desperately need wisdom. The scorner, the fool, and the simple. Derogatory terms, but each one is uh, distinctive in its own way. The scorners mock at God's wisdom because it's too high for them and they will not admit it. The Hebrew word for scorner literally means to make a mouth, and we can very well picture the smirk on the scorner's face. And they never profit from rebuke. And you know, it's interesting, as I've gone through 30-year executive career in corporate boardrooms, the CEOs, the chief executive officers that I've met, the real winners were great listeners. They didn't let their egos get in the way. They're all big ego guys for lots of good reasons, but at the same time, the winners never let that get in the way of hearing and measuring. And so the scorners... Don't pro- are, do, are, not, are not like that. They, pro- they don't profit from re- a rebuke, and so one day they will be judged. And uh, the other group is the fool. That's a person who's dense, lazy, sluggish, careless, self-sustained. Self-sustained, key point, key word. Nabal is the word in Hebrew for the fool, and the, Nabal himself was a proper name of an exemplary fool in 1 Samuel 25 that we talked about. This is just all by way of review of our earlier sessions. So the fool hates instruction, is self-confident, talks without thinking. How many of you know a fool? Okay. Anybody without their hand up wasn't listening. And, uh, and he makes a mock of sin. Realize that's a package. Not only do they talk without thinking, but they also make fun of sin. We are all guilty of that. I catch myself in that too, sometimes in the, in the interests of some joviality, not taking sin seriously. Sin offends God. And when we joke about sin, we're showing a disrespect for God's prejudices and, 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 and attitudes. The third guy is the simple person. These are, the simple are those who believe everything and everybody and they lack discernment. Most of us think, gee, that sounds kind of innocent. We think of someone who's simple as sort of an innocent. Yes, but not if diligence is required. See, they're easily led astray and lack understanding. They cannot see ahead, and as a result, they repeatedly walk into trouble. How many people know somebody like that? You bet. I I shave one every morning. (laughs) In contrast to those three, we have the wise. They listen to instruction. They obey what they hear. They store up what they learn. They win others to the Lord. They flee from sin. They watch their tongue and are diligent in their daily work. This list is a list that we could easily post on our bathroom mirrors. Everyone is not just a platitude. There's actually a proverb that there's at least more than one. I just picked uh, seven of them here that are to exemplify the fundamentals. And any of you that have been in a sport sport situation with the coach, a smart coach focuses on day one, are the fundamentals. Get the fundamentals right, the other things will fall into place. And so the results, the scorner rejects wisdom, met instruction. He listened to folly and received destruction. The fool rejected wisdom, was led to death. He listened to folly and received death. And the simple rejected wisdom, went to hell, and he listened listened to folly and ended up hell. So we have wisdom and folly portrayed rhetorically in the grammar as two women, each calling. And some follow wisdom, some follow folly. There is a verse we encountered in chapter 1, which many regard as a key verse. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You want to be smart? You want to be wise? Where do you start with an awe and a respect, a fear, healthy fear of the Lord? 